Hello, this is Dr. Rosie Kuhn, and I put on, you can't hear me, hang on a second, do this. Hello, I'm Dr. Rosie Kuhn, and uh, this is Friday's Beasts on Facebook. And the intention of these uh, little 10-minute things is to kind of recap. Uh, what I would love to do is uh, teach people how to write and how to paint. I'd love to teach, I train people to be life coaches and help and support people to be better coaches. Uh, and also I work as a coach. So our, I do all these things and it would be great to do a teaching on each one of these um, areas of life, including my personal life. But um, it just doesn't, doesn't make sense to do that. So I thought, what if I make uh, one, one, day, one time a week that I take everything I've kind of learned, the theme of the week, um, and how it pertains to each part of my life as a writer, as a painter, as a coach, as a trainer, and put it all together and kind of share it with you that way. And that way, uh, I learn a lot in terms of integrating these experiences for myself. And then I get to share that with you. And hopefully it's kind of fun and entertaining <laughs> and maybe inspiring and maybe helpful to you. So this week, this is what showed up. Uh, one of the principles of my life is uh, the way that I work and have been and have as a learner is um, it's really great to look at theories and philosophies and in information. But what I want to know is what do I need to do to take that information and actually apply it in um, hi cat. It's nice to see you. Uh, what is it? What is it I need to do? You know, what's the practice involved? So uh, I did a, a coach training, uh, the transformational coaching training program that I did at the Institute of Transpersonal Psychology, now Sophia University. And um, I, it was very pragmatic, very practical. Uh, the theory that I gave was only necessary to give you a framework or a context with which, within which to practice what I was encouraging people to practice. Uh, so when I hear other people sort of intellectualize or spiritualize in a, a, teaching, a teaching context, I want to say, well, how do you translate that from an intellectual, spiritual concept to actually practicing it in, in your own life or as a coach or as a spiritual guide or, or a therapist? So, so that's one of the elements of, of what showed up for me is where do I think about things or where do I intellectualize where do I spiritualize and where do I or how do I take those concepts of spiritualizedness and put it into everyday life so so here's an here's a for instance I um, <laughs> I know my hands talk for me a lot so it just it's just part of what shows up hello Chantel nice to see you um, so uh, the thing I wrote down before and as a theme of this talk is um, if I don't do it, I won't do it. So quite often people will read books. Here's a book I wrote called Self-Empowerment 101. It's the first book I wrote. You can see it. And it's, uh, it's a manual. There's tons of questions in it. And it also gives you a lot of concepts and theories and ideas and principles. Now, a lot of people have written this, read this book and they've looked at the questions and they've said, hey, that's great. And I'll get around to reading it later. I'll doing the, the practices later. And so what that does is it gives them, they, they take the inspiration, they take the insights, they take the breakthroughs like, yeah, that's me. And then they put the book down and they stay the same. They don't engage. Uh, and quite often this happens in therapy that uh, an individual will get insights, but there's no follow through. Like, wow, I never saw how much I was like my mother and how that's really not how I want to be. Or, wow, I really see how my brother and, and I are very much the same. Whatever that is, that insight, how do we translate that so that it creates an action that engages you or me into the next level of work? So, um, so it's a really big question. So for me, it's, as I said, if I don't do it, I won't do it. So in a sense, if I don't start, if I don't write, I won't write, right? A friend of mine uh, 
he, he he's this brilliant, wonderful, wise person. And people would say, you should write because you're just so good at all this word stuff. And he goes, okay, I'm going to be a writer. And he was going to take a class on how to write. And then I'd say, hey, have you been writing? And he says, no, I haven't been writing because I'm doing this or I'm doing that or I'm learning about, but I'm not actually writing. And it's like, if you don't write, you won't write. If I don't paint, I won't paint. If I don't uh, coach or stretch myself into that process, I, 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 won't, I won't grow myself the way I want to. Um, and that's the same with me personally, is if I don't do the, the work personally, if I don't look at what's important to me, not just reading the material, I read, as, as you know, I've, I read oneness every day, just about what you're hearing is Gracie behind me somewhere uh, scratching. Uh, I read what I read, but if I don't sit and just actually take in what that is saying to me specifically, what am I to learn here, then I won't integrate that learning. I'll just go, wow, that's really in interesting. Uh, I'm really glad to hear that, but I don't take it to the next level, uh, the next level of my growth, my expansion, my desire to know more about how I experience life, uh, how I grow into potentiality. So one of my principles, and you can, you've heard me say this probably, you've heard me say this, is um, that we're 100% potentiality. And so that's a nice theory. And for me, I've taken on as a pr principle of my life. It's I'm 100% potentiality. Now, that's great. But what am I going to do with that? And how does that, sh how does that principle play itself out as, as a person who paints, a person that writes, a person that does all the things that I do? Most importantly, how I be me. How does that principle play out? And if I don't actually engage in the inquiry around that, like how, what's the experiment? What's the investigation? That's, that's such a big part of who I am. And you all have to find what's important to you. Like, how do you get to know yourself better? How do you get to be the you you want to be? What empowers you to take the next step? Uh, a really good friend of mine said she watches these um, Friday's feasts and she said they're so inspiring. And I went, wow, that's really cool. <laughs> she's, she's inspired by my, by these things. And then I was like, inspired to what? Inspired to what? Like, what does it inspire you to do, if anything? Or does, what does it inspire you to think about or be with, with yourself to take you to the next level of your potentiality? So as a coach, I'm always listening to people saying, oh, I learned this, or I'm going to take this class, or, I'm going to take this training program. And I want to say, what's that? In, what's the intention of that? What is it that you're wanting to do that a lot of times these classes get in the way of doing? So for instance, one person I'd been working with and he was working in the corporate world and he wanted to be a coach. It's like, awesome. So what he did is he went and got a master's degree in positive psychology, which has nothing to do with coaching and no training in coaching. And what it did is it postponed, delayed his next step. And in a sense, that was an intention of that was to postpone that next step because it's too scary, potentially. So, you know, when I write, when I come to do these uh these Friday's feasts, I have, you know, I write my notes and I prepare in my mind what I'm going to say. And then whatever shows up through this, you know, interaction with you is what shows up. So it's like nothing's wrong and no, there's no bad things. There's no hygiene, Neri, nice to see you. Ramir, it's nice to see you. Uh, there's nothing wrong with how you are in this moment. Uh, my own, my encouragement for myself and for you is to say, uh, again, if I come back to, if I don't do it, I won't do it. If I don't um, engage in what it is I really want to know or want to experience or, you know, as a, a musician, if I don't challenge myself, if I don't push and lean into what I, what scares me, what 
I won't do it. And if I don't do it, then I won't grow as a, I'm not a musician at all. <laughs> but as an artist, an artist, a person who practices stretching into the expression of self, however that looks, if I don't lean into that process, I won't. I'll, I'll ignore, avoid, and uh, distract myself from the possibilities, from the potentiality that is right in front of me. So that's what I want for each of you. It's whether you're, uh, it's about your creative endeavors, about your work, career endeavors, your relationship endeavors. Last week I spoke about um, a couple who's wanting to develop and grow their level of connection and intimacy. And that's like, if you, again, if you don't do it, you won't do it. If you don't lean into what's scary or hard or challenging, it's, it won't happen. And, and then we stay the way that we are. So I, cur I, I just encourage you to be curious about how you be with you around what you want to make happen in your life, what you want to create, what you want to engage in, what you want to expand yourself into. And notice where you pull back from that edge. So I, I want to do it, but, and then I don't do it. I'll do it tomorrow. And I heard something really cool, which is a person who's, who's got wisdom won't put off stuff till tomorrow. They'll do it now because now is the time to do it. <laughs> I tried to take a nap this afternoon and uh, I, some of you heard me talk about that I'm doing a presentation for this organization assist in November and it's just like something had to get done. Boom. I'm up from my nap and going at it because I didn't really need to take a nap. I just was resting. But that it's now is the time to do it. And if you're not ready to do it, that's okay too. Just acknowledge you're not ready to do it and or you don't want to do it or it's not yours to do. And that's really important too. I kind of mentioned that last week. If if I didn't want to grow myself my edge of of painting, I wouldn't do it. Uh, if I didn't want to grow my edge as being a coach or training people to be coaches, I wouldn't do it. And I'm okay with that. Um, I tried to play the cello and didn't work. So I'm okay with that. So know for yourself where it works for you to want to and actually engage and where you don't. And when you don't, and if you don't, then just acknowledge that. And, and it's an, an ability to to really respect who you are, respect and honor. Hey, this isn't mine to do. I don't want to do it. So, I mean, I want to do it and I don't want to do it enough. So that's it. But if you want to do it, and if you don't think, <laughs> if, you don't want, if you don't want to put in the effort, I totally get that. And don't put in the effort and just give it up and say, I really don't want to do it enough to make it happen. And that's a really loving thing to do for yourself is just to say that I don't I don't want to do it enough you know I would love to eat better have a healthier diet and though I want it I don't want it enough to make it an everyday every meal kind of thing so I don't and I'm I got to be okay with that so I think that's pretty much it for day for today just you know when you're inspired you know are you aspired to do something or it's just invigorating and exciting or it's cool to hear those things from people you know it's it's a, this but like as i mentioned the spiritualizations people say very spiritual things and it's like okay well what does that mean in terms of how i'm going to be in my life to to live those principles or live that philosophy and if you don't want to do it be clear about what the philosophy is that you do want to live. That's really important. That's the most important thing. And even in listening to me, you might go, well, that's silly or that's foolish or that doesn't work for me or that's not my way of doing things. And it's like, excellent. I'm so glad that you're acknowledging that for yourself. And if my way and what I say isn't working for you, it's really cool then to say, if that's not my way, what is my way? What is my philosophy? What are my principles? What are my values? Because that's all we're doing in any conversation is we're distinguishing, hey, I like what they're saying and that works for me. Or no, that doesn't work for me because here's what's true for me. And the more we can have a clear connection with our own direct experience, our own direct knowing, that's what it's all about. And that's what I really want for you guys. And I want that for me. And I keep pushing for myself and I encourage and uh, you guys to do that with you. 
if you'd like any support from me, you can find me at theparadigmshifts.com. You can read my books. I've got tons of books and blogs you can read, and hopefully they'll inspire you to do what's challenging to do. Uh, or you can email me at rosie at the paradigm shifts. You can leave a message in the message here too, and I'd be happy to, to uh, answer any questions or comments. All right. Thanks, you guys, for showing up. Big hugs. Bye for now.